In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage electronics, the Heathkit SA5010 Micromatic Memory Keyer. Morse code, or CW, is a method of communication used in amateur radio. Commercial use of Morse code ended around the beginning of the 21st century, and the mandatory requirement for knowing Morse code was dropped from international amateur radio regulations in the early 2000s. Despite that, it continues to be a popular form of communication in amateur radio and offers a number of advantages over voice and other forms of communication. While traditionally sent using a hand key or straight key, the speed and accuracy when using a straight key is limited and it can be tiring for the operator and extended use can even lead to injuries like carpal tunnel syndrome. An improvement was the bug which used two switches and could send dots automatically when one side was pressed. These were entirely mechanical devices. By the 1950s, electronic keyers were developed that could send both dots and dashes automatically. Some of the earliest designs used vacuum tubes, then later transistors and integrated circuits. Modern keyers typically use microcontrollers, are small and low cost, and offer features like storing messages in memory. A key feature of modern keyers is the so-called iambic mode. Pressing one paddle sends dots, Pressing the other sends dashes, and pressing both sends alternate dots and dashes. This takes some getting used to, but means that fewer actions are needed to send characters. For example, the character C requires four presses with a non-iambic here, and only two with iambic. Heathkit introduced their first keyer kit, the HD10, in 1965. It sold well and was on the market until 1974. I've covered this unit in another video. In 1974 it was replaced by the HD 1410. Smaller and offering more features, it also supported iambic operation. It was sold from 1975 through 1984 at a cost of around US $59.95. I own one and have covered it in another YouTube video. In 1981, Heathkit introduced the SA5010 Micromatic here, the subject of this video. It was smaller and used a microprocessor, allowing it to support more features. Typically selling in the US for about $99.95, it was offered until 1985 when it was replaced by the similar SA5010A, which was offered until 1991, almost up to the time that Heathkit left the kit market. As far as I can determine, the SA5010 and SA5010A only differed in styling, the former being in a beige color case and the latter model was gray. A small circuit change described as a factory fix to the 5010 was included in the 5010A. The features of the Micromatic Keyer include the following. Up to 10 buffers for storing text or commands. These are variable length buffers which eliminates wasted memory space. Available memory is also effectively increased by the use of command strings and by a repeat feature which allows you to automatically send a message up to 10 times. An editing feature which allows easy recovery from errors when you load a message buffer. A built-in side tone oscillator and speaker with variable volume and pitch. A phone jack and earphone are provided for private use. A thin 22 position keypad lets you enter character formation speed character spacing, character weighting, message repeat count, message buffer, and mode. The side tone is gated to provide audible feedback to produce a click, and illegal entries and error conditions produce a warble. Integral capacitive touch paddles which reduce fatigue. The paddles unplug and store inside the keyer when not in use. Also a rear panel jack is provided for an external mechanical paddle assembly. Full iambic operation, five LEDs to indicate the current mode of the keyer, a practice mode which allows you to send random code groups of random length and selectable character type, alpha, alphanumeric, and alphanumeric plus punctuation. 100 different repeatable character sequences are available, all of which are altered every time you turn on the keyer. A PC switch which allows you to pause, manually insert text into a message buffer being sent, and then continue. When you insert a pause character in a message or command string, an automatic pause is made at that point so you can manually enter text. CMOS memory with battery backup to retain the buffer contents 
as well as the last selected speed, spacing, weight, and repeat count while the keyer is turned off and unplugged. Selection of either right-handed or left-handed operation from the keypad. Built-in diagnostics that check the microprocessor each time the keyer is turned on and test RAM when batteries are replaced or when the keyer is reset. An automatic shutoff after more than approximately 15 minutes of non-use. The speed range is 1 to 99 words per minute. The 10 memory buffers can hold up to 240 characters or commands in total. The memory is backed up by internal batteries with a typical lifetime of one year. It can key a transmitter with positive polarity up to 250 volts at 100 milliamps or negative polarity up to 200 volts at 40 milliamps. A modification was described that added an external transistor and other components to support higher current negative keying. As well as built-in paddles, it supported external paddles. The side tone is adjustable as well as the pitch from approximately 300 to 1500 hertz. It requires a power source of 11 to 16 volts DC at 250 milliamps or 8.5 volts AC at 1 amp. A suitable power adapter was sold as the Heathkit PS5012. The front or top panel has a membrane keypad that controls operations. I'll cover these later. Five LEDs indicate the operating mode. The built-in paddles are at the front. A unique aspect of the keyer is that the paddles are touch sensitive and don't require any pressure or movement to activate. This takes some getting used to but works quite well in practice. The default is for the left paddle to send dashes and the right to send dots, but this can be reversed with a keypad command or wired as the default if desired. The back panel has connectors for power source, negative keying output, positive keying output, connections to an external paddle, and earphones. An earplug was included in the kit. A slide-out panel allows storing the paddles, which are removable, and has a Morse code reference printed on it. The bottom provides access to the controls for dot and dash sensitivity adjustment, side tone volume, and side tone pitch. These are rarely changed. The bottom of the case also lists some of the keyer commands. The case is heavy and has rubber feet to prevent it from moving when in use. Most circuitry is on one single-sided printed circuit board. Some additional components are on the case near the connectors. The speaker and three small memory backup batteries mount inside the top of the case. The membrane keyboard is attached to the case via a ribbon cable. A regulator IC is mounted on the metal base to act as a heat sink. The paddles are inserted and connect to metal tabs on the printed circuit board. A sheet of insulating paper is between the PCB and the case bottom. Most functions of the keyer are performed by a custom 3870 microprocessor. The chip is standard but is programmed with Heathkit's ROM code. The same processor was used in several other Heathkit products including the PT-1500 Darkroom Timer, Hero 2000 Robot, and GR3000 Television. It's a version of the Fairchild F8, which is little known today, but was heavily used in embedded systems in the late 70s and early 80s. Other circuitry handles the message memory, keyboard, LED displays, paddle inputs, side tone, and transmitter keying. It uses a combination of integrated circuits and discrete transistors. The unit is tested when partially assembled. Once it's fully assembled, it's a little hard to work on. The unit is turned on or off with the on and off switches. It will also turn off automatically if idle for more than 15 minutes. When unpowered, it retains most settings and the message buffer contents. As mentioned, touching the paddles will send dots and dashes using iambic operation. Pressing the Tune button will turn on the output continuously to key a transmitter until a key or paddle is pressed. Entering one or more numbers and then the WPM key will set the sending speed in words per minute. Here I'm at 15 words per minute. I can set it to 25 or 5. 
we're back to 15. You could also set the character spacing, the time between characters, and the character weight, the ratio of dot to dash times, using the spacing and WT keys. A message can be recorded by typing a buffer number from 0 to 9 and then the load key. You can then key in Morse code which is saved in a message buffer. This can be used for short, commonly sent messages like a CQ or call to any station to respond. The message is terminated with the stop key. You can correct errors during entry by entering seven or more dots which will delete the last character entered. If you press the PC or pause continue key when entering a message, it will pause at that point when the buffer is played back. This allows you to enter information which changes, like signal report, RST information. You can play back a buffer by keying in the buffer number followed by send. As mentioned, a buffer message can have one or more pauses in it, which allows you to manually key in information and press the PC key to continue playback. You can also use the PC key to pause and continue playback at any time when playing a message buffer, or press stop to stop sending. Here's a buffer I recorded to make a CQ, or call to any station, with my call sign. And here's an example of a message that has some text and a pause, so I can enter a signal report manually. You can send a message multiple times by entering a number and then the repeat key. A recorded message can also specify to set parameters such as speed, set the repeat count, and to send the contents of other buffers. The prac or practice key causes the keyer to send strings of random Morse code practice characters. Depending on the number first entered, it can send alphanumeric characters as well as numeric and punctuation as well. There are 6400 different practice sessions available. Here's an example. The five LEDs at the top of the keypad indicate the current mode. Practice mode, loading a message, paused and waiting, sending a message, and normal operation. On power-up, the keyer performs a self-test, including memory check. Pressing the load and send key simultaneously will reverse the paddles. And pressing the PC and stop simultaneously will reset the keyer to all defaults. I bought this unit on eBay in March of 2024. It came with a power cable, but no power supply or manual. I found a full manual for the SA5010A version, which is identical except for case color. From the pictures in the eBay listing, I thought it might be missing the paddles, but they were tucked inside the storage area in the case. When received, it was a little dirty and only one paddle was working. Initially, it looked like the reason was that one of the metal clips for a paddle had come unsoldered, but after fixing that, it was still not working. I noticed that C25 was installed in the wrong location, but after correcting that, it still didn't work. Eventually, I determined that ICU-8, a CD4049, was bad. The output of one of the inverters was the same as the input, and there was a low resistance between the input and output pins. Fortunately, the IC was socketed. I ordered a replacement part, it's a common chip, and when replaced, it now worked. The unit had memory backup batteries inside, but they were old and I replaced them. It uses three A76 type. I replaced some of the double-sided tape when reassembling the unit, as it had degraded. The paddle dot and dash sensitivity needed to be adjusted, using two trimmers so that it correctly sends when they're touched. I also adjusted the side tone volume and pitch, and then confirmed that all of the functions were working. This was the third in Heathgate's progression of keyer designs. 
As mentioned, I've also made videos on the HD10 and HD1410 keyers. It was unique with its capacitive touch switch design. Some people love it, while others prefer a more mechanical feel. Of course, you can always use an external paddle if desired. Despite being designed over 40 years ago, the Micromatic is not too different from keyers still being sold today, and many people are still using them on the air.